Hello and welcome to this week's video, which I was sure would be a Ben 10 video, but I've not had time to finish Rip Jaws, so it's going to have to be this video, which is also another highly requested video from a fair few of you. So I'm going to be showing how I paint 112 scale heads, doing it slightly different to what I usually do, using airbrush colours this time, although I'm using the same colours I normally would. You can see that I've got a beige and a white, and a bit of water because that beige is an acrylic and not an airbrush paint. But I'm just going to go through layers, adding the kind of more grey tone here, then a more vibrant, vibrant yellowy beige, and then adding some red to the beige just to kind of finish off the skin tone. Also getting rid of flies where I can. Don't worry, I didn't spray them with actual paint, that was just a bit of compressed air. Um, you don't really want them landing on your paint job because you end up with either a fly stuck to the paint job or the little foot imprints. So you kind of just want to get them away where you can. Now you can see there it's quite a beige base. So I'm going in and adding another layer of a more intense beige, which you can see here. It's kind of more yellow toned than I would like it to be for skin tone. So I'm going to go back and mix a little bit of red in with this color. And you can see here, I'm fairly happy with that. It's kind of the exact color of my hand, which I'm going to call is good enough. Now what you can't quite see there is I've very gently sprinkled this red in with the beige and then sprayed it from a distance to layer it so you've kind of got a skin texture in it which hopefully you'll be able to see in this video. Now for doing the rest of the hand painting here's the paints I'm using, they're kind of messed up, that is a Kislev flesh. I'm not too sure what that is, maybe a Morlung brown? Or Fang Brown? I have no idea. These are my kind of go-to paints when I'm painting like 112 heads. I do end up swapping this gold out. This is way too bright of a gold. I go for a bit of a darker one. I also don't end up using this watch. You can use this to kind of bring out details on the face if you want. I personally didn't want to make the face any darker. And then I'm bringing the white airbrush so I can do the eyes. Tools wise, I'm using that card as my mixing palette for the paints. That's a silicon sculpting tool. Uh, it's just good for kind of getting small details or rubbing excess away. And there's two nail art brushes and then this very old brush that I've had, but it seems to keep a very small point on it, which means it'll be perfect for the eyes and things. But bringing a very mannequin looking head sculpt back in. Uh, the ring light makes it look a lot more creepy than it is. But you can kind of see what I mean about the speckled flesh tone that I did. Much easier to achieve with an airbrush. There are obviously a few heavier flecks of red in there. Um, I'm not too bothered about those. They're kind of character, I suppose. Now you'll also see in this video why I don't paint head sculpts on camera very often. This was extremely difficult to do. In order to kind of be in this position I had my arms wrapped either side of my camera and ring light and I was just peering through a gap in between the camera and the top of the ring light to be able to make this. Uh, it was a difficult task. But hopefully you can see there that I'm just kind of going in and catching the bottom and top of the eyelids. Just the edges where you would meet the eyeball, just to try and give it some depth when we go in and paint the white. It's much easier to do this first than afterwards, uh, or personally I find it easier to do first. But you can see there, just trying to be very careful and you want as little paint on the brush as possible, just so you're kind of grazing some brown off onto those eyelids. You ideally don't want these just kind of black lines under the eyelids. So 
yeah, as you can see, painting head sculpts does take quite a while. Um, I could have edited this out. A lot of you have asked me to leave more of the process in, and I kind of wanted you guys to see just what goes into customs like this. But using my thumb to wipe off some of the excess, I do also use the sculpting tool to wipe out some bits that I can't reach with my thumb. Also a weird thing that you kind of pick up when you do customs, uh, you start to remember which finger you've used to wipe off paint already. So you'll use your thumb, realize there's wet paint on there, and then you'll start using your other fingers because you don't want to risk putting that paint back onto the figure or onto whatever you're painting. So there you can see you've got the kind of dark outlines in his eyes. And I did a little bit too much on this eye, so I'm just using that sculpting tool. And I'm just rubbing a little bit of that brown away. Not loads, literally just enough so that it's kind of not overwhelmingly dark around the eyes. I don't want him to look extremely tired or anything. But you can see that that's one of the uses for this sculpting tool. And with that, I'm fairly happy with how the outlines have come out. So I'm going to go and add the white. This eye, I almost immediately mess up. I should have wiped some excess off of this brush. I kind of dipped it in the paint and went straight in for the eye. I should have wiped some off and then just layered up the levels of white, especially since it's an airbrush paint. Airbrush paints are so much easier to layer. Uh, they dry very quickly. You can get a thin layer on. It will dry quick and get a second layer on. And normally that's enough white to kind of do the eyes. Uh, you can see there it's a very intense white. And because it's quite thick, I've got less control over where it's going. Yeah, a uh, little bit finicky, but this eye turned out much nicer. And I don't think I actually dipped any more paint onto this brush. I'm fairly sure I'm using the excess of what was left from doing the first eye. Which, if you're able to do that, you've definitely used too much paint on the first eye. You can see there, that one's definitely keeping into the lines nicer. It's not quite as glarish of a bright white as the other one is. And it's much easier to control it. Now that's what the flesh tone and the red is for. Apart from doing the lips, that will allow me to come in and correct those little bits where I've gone too far with the white. And just kind of bring it back to just being in the eye. I will admit colour matching something you've airbrushed about three layers of paint on is very difficult because obviously you can't get that depth back with just a little touch up. So ideally you want to keep the touch ups to a minimum so you're not having to kind of repaint a whole patch because if you're painting a big patch it's going to be noticeable where the original paint was and where the repair paint is. So that there was me fixing the eyes because now I've moved on to the lips and this is just the mix of the red and the Kislev flesh. And you can see it is slightly too ready, which is why I ended up using it on the lips. But it also wasn't too red to really notice around the eyes. Um, I think I've managed to get away with doing a little bit of touch up around the eye and it kind of blended with the brown enough that I could just get away with it and it's fixed the white a little bit. And of course having enough still left on the brush meant I was able to do the lips a bit. And with lips that have a big tash, like Rob Delaney does, you kind of just want to get a little line under the tash. You don't want to try and do the full lip, you just want a little hint that there are lips underneath it. Then of course here's the second use for that silicon tool. Dipping it in the paint. Uh, you can get a very thin layer and a very small point for the black or, in this case, a very dark brown. Now, in order to not mess this up, I am doing the pupils and everything off camera and, well, just the actual detail of the eye. I don't really want to risk messing this up. This is a very difficult bit to repaint if you do get it wrong. So that was the dark brown and then the lighter brown, dark brown for the outline of the iris, 
lighter brown for the main brown and then I've gone in with a bit of that gold I don't know how well you can see it but I've added some flex to kind of mimic the lines that you get in your iris which you'll be able to see better at the end of the video and then coming back in with the black to do the actual pupils and those are the eyes done it looks very simple because obviously I've not done it on camera but it is just a lot of caution especially getting the little flecks of that metallic in there and now this does look ridiculous I'll explain why I'm doing it this way so I'm going to start with the darker colour you want to get the more central areas done with the black if you've got dark brown hair like this and then fill in the rest with the dark brown and then you can go with your lighter brown and dry brush what this does is it'll add depth to obviously the thicker areas with hair so if you've got the center of his head you want that done with the black and you should be able to see there that the brown kind of gets lighter as it goes towards the edges of the hair now it's not too noticeable with dark colors like this but with lighter tones you're going to notice that obviously a lighter base and a dark base you're going to get different finished colors when the paint dries so usually this is work better for blonde hair but it does still give a little bit of an effect to the brown now that's the matte coat that i use to clear most of my stuff and you know what i'm very happy with how this came out i think this very much looks like rob delaney but i'm not satisfied with the eyes just yet they're very dead the matte coats kind of toned away the metallic that i did in the uh, iris so I'm going to go in with a little bit of gloss, which I often do to custom painted heads. I like to gloss the eyes. Uh, you've seen me do it with Deadpool. You've seen me do it. I don't actually think I did it with Wolverine, but I've done it with Deadpool. So it only makes sense that I do it with actual human eyes. And this is just the clear lacquer that I'm going to use. And now you want to be careful not to do too much. I have a habit of doing a little bit too much and making them look teary eyed. Uh, but just a little bit of gloss over the eyes just adds that little bit of life. And now I haven't been able to showcase it very well with the way the ring light and everything's set up here. So here is a video I took afterwards. And I think you'll agree it looks much better when you've got the correct lighting on it. And here you can see the detail in the iris much nicer as well. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week for the Ben 10 video.